All right, so this is a basic example of um, how to set up the, uh, the canvas in JavaScript. I will be doing the same thing, but using pass to JS. Um, so if we look over here, I have a much longer version of this program, uh, but it essentially does the same thing. I'll go over each part, but let me show you um, both files that we need. So we have the uh, Pascal file, and we also have a little HTML slash JavaScript code. Um, if we look here, there's not much defined here except the uh, the test.js. This is going to be what's created once we compiled uh, this, the test.pass file. And uh, this is just basically a small starter uh, to get your application going. And it has minimal amount of code. The only code that I have added here that's not from the default template is this line here. And it basically is a div with the ID game board and inside uh, the canvas um, declaration to create a canvas that's 200 pixels wide and 200 pixels uh, tall and we give it the ID of canvas underscore one. And in terms of JavaScript code, we only have one line and that's basically to run the runtime, uh, which will be this file. So I'm gonna go ahead and just compile it so you can see what happens. So I'll be using the uh, command line. Sorry, wrong window. <laughs> Uh, here we go. All right. So uh, let's do a little directory. There's already a file there. I'm going to delete it. And now I'm going to compile it. I have a little batch file that um, saves me from typing a a longer uh, command line. I'll show you that afterwards. So if I just do this, it creates uh, my JavaScript file. So it creates this file. And if you notice it, it looks kind of big, but that's fine. Um, let's, uh, let's jump into a browser now and we'll run it. And uh, if you look carefully, it's a, it's the same folder as I've, I've been showing you. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the test HTML file. That'll launch everything. And here we go. Except in our little example, we also have the uh, hello world um, text. But if we go back to our code, we can see how all this works. So we have to declare a couple of variables. One is the uh, canvas element. And the other is the context variable. And we don't have to do this in JavaScript, but um, in Pascal, we have to. This is so the compiler knows what it's dealing with. And uh, where things start looking similar is around this line here. These two lines are basically the same thing in JavaScript. So if we jump, uh, if we jump back, and take a look at the code here. Again, the uh, Pascal version is a little longer, but it's essentially the same thing. Uh, the uh, document dot get element by ID and the canvas get context. We do a little bit more typecasting um, right here and right here, but essentially it's the same thing. Uh, we could also modify, I've, uh, I've put in this, this is extra. Uh, we could also modify the, uh, the canvas attributes. So we started off with 200 by 200, but we can change the, uh, the canvas. Let's go ahead and uh, also do the, the height to 300. Save it and let's see.
let's compile it again. And if we go back to our browser, reload. Now, if you notice the, uh, the area here got a little bigger, but we can't see that. So if we hit the inspect, we get all this now. So here's our, our canvas width now is 300 and our height is 300. So what it should have done was basically shown you this before, but let's do it backwards. I will comment these lines, save it, and let's compile again and see what the results are. All right, back to our browser, refresh. And if we look now, there are 200 for the width and 200 for the height. All right, so that's that's one nice thing you can do in Pascal that makes it more readable. You can access the uh, the element attributes uh, directly. We're using real types here. And uh, the rest is additional uh, canvas commands. So in this, uh, we're setting the, uh, the fill style to green. That's the color for any filled shapes. And um, here we're, we're setting a font. We're setting the color for the font red. And we're setting the text say hello world. We can change this to say hello Nick. Save it. And again, if we compile back to our browser, refresh, hello Nick. Now it doesn't show the full thing because our canvas is only 200. Let's uh, let's modify that. But this time, let's modify it in the HTML file. So, I, so you're free to make changes in both files. I like to try and keep this area to a minimal and do all my uh, settings in the in the code, but. That's a preference thing, and you can do whatever you like. So recompile again, and back to our browser. And this time we get to see the, uh, the full Nick. All right. So uh, I've put a link here to the uh, developer uh, instructions or documentation. Uh, you can see additional commands here and how to use them. Uh, they're basically, you can, whatever you find in JavaScript, you should be able to cut and paste and with a little modification, uh, like the assignment, usually in JavaScript, the equal sign is the assignment. And you just have to add a little colon there and make it the assignment in Pascal. But everything else, string variables work the same way, so you shouldn't have to change very much. So all the uh, additional commands that are available, uh, you can use those. I don't need to go e over each one. So let's say, um, let's see if we, of course it's not gonna work. Uh, There we go, using basic usage, drawing shapes. Let's see. All right, so there's additional commands. Feel free to try all these. So all we have to do is just, uh, let's see if we can create a, a triangle or a dime like they have here. Go back to our code. I just simply cut and paste. And let's see if we get the same thing. Again, compile. And back to our browser. And let's refresh. And 
No, we did not get anything. Oh, did I compile? Let's... Well, okay. Let's see. Maybe we can comment this stuff out. Maybe I missed a line. Let's uh, let's go back here. Nope. That all seems right. Okay. Compile again. Refresh. Oh, there we go. Okay, so it was uh, it was drawing in the same area we had the box, so that's why it wasn't working. Okay, so I think that's enough for that example. The other example I wanted to show you is let me close these down is this one and uh, let's load up both files again all right so in the previous example i created the canvas in the html file this time i'm only uh, creating a div with the id game board and uh, remember this, it'll, it'll make more sense when I'm explaining here what we do. So again, all similar code, except this time I have another variable and I've, we're calling div element here. And uh, we're creating the canvas dynamically here. So we're using this command, uh, document create element we're specifying it's a canvas and we're giving it a canvas ID of a canvas underscore two. And uh, let's just change the height to 400 by 400. And what we're doing here is getting the div element. And remember I said the ID is called game board. So once we have the uh, div element, we append the canvas. And what this should do is insert the uh, canvas right inside here. So this, gonna, this is going to happen dynamically at runtime. It's, it'll insert it right in here. Besides that, it, everything else should work uh, just like normal. And we can, again, get the context and used these drawing commands. So let's compile this. I will need to switch to this folder now. Let's delete the previous code. I'm only deleting the JavaScript and recompiling it. It compiled all right, so this time we go back to our browser, but we have to go back to the parent directory and go into dynamic canvas and run the test program there. And this time we get the hello world in blue with the uh, red rectangle. And uh, Although I'm not seeing the uh, the width of 400, let's go back. Interesting. Am I in the right place? All right. Let's try 200. 
and refresh this. That's strange. So 200 works. Maybe it's some kind of strange caching problem. Let's go back, change it to 400. Save. And compile again. And refresh. Yep, this time it worked for some reason. Which is strange. I don't know why I was giving us uh, the 300 value, but it works now. All right. So the other thing I wanted to mention here is if we didn't want to use a div um, to insert the uh, the canvas, we could also insert it uh, with the uh, document dot body dot append child command as well. So what I'll do is I'll comment this and uh, we don't even need to use this here. And let me save that. But before I compile again, let's go back here and see where the canvas is. And if we look here, it's right under right inside the uh, game board div. And uh, if we compile it now, let's refresh. And if we look now, the canvas is actually no longer inside the div here. It's inside the body, but lower down here. So this is where the location of our canvas is. And I think this is as much as I want to show you in this video. Uh, in a future video, I will show you how to create a, a hidden canvas and copy it to a visible canvas. And this creates a similar effect to the uh, double buffering technique used in uh, creating some games. And uh, I think it's a good way to learn uh, how to use the canvas by trying to do some simple games. And I think that's uh, one way I'll approach this in future videos, try to create a simple game in the, uh, in the canvas or a simple demo to show you moving around shape uh, just to demonstrate how it works. Anyway, that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching.